hello 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 yes welcome colleagues friends and professionals this is the airport safety channel and it is a privilege to host you today my name is isaac otu and it is a privilege to have you on my channel you are welcome once again We have been on this series for a period now, and we previously looked at airport inspector and discussed what is involved in becoming an airport inspector. We also asked if you have what it takes to be an airport inspector. If you have not watched the previous presentations, I encourage that you pause on this one, watch the previous ones, and come and continue with this presentation. Today, we are looking at how well do you know your facility? And this is in fulfillment of your request for me to go deeper into airport facilities and also look at the uh, Annex 19. So we will follow up on what you have requested. We will be using Annex 14, Volume 1, Aerodromes, the ninth edition as we go along the coming presentations. So stay tuned and enjoy yourself whilst you learn at the same time. So let's look at some definitions in the Annex 14. And the first one has to do with aerodrome. Annex 14 says that an aerodrome is a defined area on land or water including any buildings, installations, and equipment intended to be used either wholly or in part for the arrival, departure, and surface movement of an aircraft. If we look at a document produced by ICAO in March 2019, you would see that 182 international aerodromes are in operations as at March 2019, 35% of states have only one international aerodrome. 7% of states have more than eight international aerodromes. So I want to find out how many international aerodromes do you have in your country? Don't forget to put that answer in the comment section. In every international aerodrome, we have what we call the land side and the air side. Annex 14 focuses on the air side facilities. And that is why we will be focusing on the air side facilities. Let's also look at the definition for a runway. A runway. A runway is defined as a rectangular area on a land aerodrome prepared for the landing and takeoff of aircraft. So if you look on your screen, you will discover that we have a red bounded area. That is the runway, the area prepared for the landing and taking off of aircraft. No other area is used for the takeoff of aircraft except for these locations. What more does Annex 14 say? Yes, Annex 14, Chapter 3.1, Runways. It focuses mainly on runways, and we will be following up our presentations from this particular section. Let's start by looking at the types of runways. Annex 14 introduces us to primary runway, primary runway, and it requires or it is recommended that the primary runway meet the operational requirements of the aeroplanes for which the runway is intended. So your primary runway is most likely the runway that will contain or operate the biggest aircraft that is intended to operate within your aerodrome. The primary runway will be used for such purposes. 
whereas the secondary runway may only be meeting the needs of aeroplanes which require to use that secondary runway only. And X14 provides minimum distances between parallel runways, meaning that you could have a primary runway in parallel to a secondary runway or a secondary runway positioned next to a primary runway. So if you have a number of runways, a particular runway will be identified as the primary runway and the rest will be secondary runways. So the airport can have a single runway that is only the primary runway or it may have parallel runways which is made up of two, three, or even four runways in the same aerodrome. It may also have intersecting runways. That is a minor runway crossing a primary runway or a secondary runway crossing a primary runway. 75% of international aerodromes only have one runway. 24% have two runways and 1% have three or more runways. And this is as at March 2019 in the gap analysis performed by IQ. So the next question then is what pavement types do runways have? And this is not determined by Annex 14. It is a local determination by the airport operator. Annex 14 only mentions that for the purposes of determining the aircraft classification number, the behavior of a pavement shall be classified as equivalent to a rigid or flexible construction. So the behavior of the pavement upon which an aircraft will land or take off is either considered to be rigid or flexible. Rigid or flexible. So you may have rigid runways with flexible taxiways and rigid aprons, or you may have a single runway that is made up of both rigid and flexible surfaces. Rigid and flexible surfaces. What runway type do you have? Remember to enter it in the comment section. Now, we've had a brief overview of runways, what runways are. The question is, what is our responsibility when it comes to inspections? Annex 14, Chapter 3, Section 1.22 says that the surface of a runway shall be constructed without irregularities that would impair the surface friction characteristics or otherwise adversely affect the takeoff or landing of an aeroplane. So when a runway is constructed, the contractor's priority is to ensure that these irregularities do not exist. But as we operate aircraft on the runway, these things are likely to develop. Therefore, as an inspector, your job is to look out for irregularities that may impair the runway surface friction characteristics or that may affect the takeoff or landing of an aeroplane. Let's look at some practical examples. But first, don't forget to click the subscribe button 
Press on the bell so that you'll be notified whenever a video is uploaded. Click on the like button so that our videos will be easily seen once you type in the search button. And remember to share with your friends so that the knowledge will not be stuck only on your devices. What do you think of the following images? Are they okay? What challenges do they pose? Yes, the one on the left can generate FOD, which will then damage aircraft in operation. The one on the right can impact on runway friction. In total, the state of the runway can deteriorate to the point that it may impair effective control of aircraft. So during your inspection, you are to take pictures of such observations and put them in a report for management to be aware. What do you think of the following? On the left, you can clearly see the runway grooving. Even though there are several tie marks on the runway, and on the right, the groovings are fading and you can see heavy rubber deposits. What does this mean? What will be the impact after it rains? What do you think must be done in this situation? These are things that need to quickly run through your mind when conducting airside runway inspection. This is not the state that a runway is supposed to be in. So remember to report your observation and also seek advice from the pavement engineers if you lack the ability to determine an option or a solution for this situation. On your screen, you may see a clean runway. But remember, do not judge only based on what you see. Request for technical verification, such as the recent friction testing results, to advise you on whether this runway meets the frictional characteristics requirement of the state. Also, verify on the number of operations that has been conducted within the last 90 days and decide based on the standard provided in the guidance document whether you should go ahead and request for a testing to be done or not. Also, look at recent reports, incident reports, audit reports relating to the runway. And once you have all this information, it will guide your judgment for you to produce a rich report for your management. What is your opinion on this runway? When you go out and you see stuff like this, what is your opinion? Your comments and feedback is very important to me. Get involved. I don't like you sitting behind and only watching. I want you to get involved. Put in a comment. What do you see in the picture? What will be your comment, your reporting? What are you going to say to your superiors about such a scene on your runway during inspection? Put in a comment and let's start the discussion going. Remember, once you inspect your runway, you make it safe
So, to bring your presentation to a close, I'd like to give you our bullet for today. Remember, your inspection is to identify and report any irregularities that would, one, impair the runway surface fishing characteristics or otherwise adversely affect the takeoff or landing of an aeroplane. This is your bullet for today. Thank you for watching. Post your comments and questions. Help us reach our 500 subscriber goal in this month of September. It takes a second to click on the subscribe button. Encourage your colleagues and friends to do so. Thank you very much. Share with one and all.